Have you ever had to be the bearer of bad news, whether it's telling someone about a deceased loved one or the loss of a job, among many other tragedies? Well, in our lesson today, the prophet Jeremiah is tasked with telling the king of Judah that in order to live as well as keep Jerusalem safe, he's going to have to do the one thing that many of us struggle with even today. He's going to have to do the only six-letter curse word in the English language, and that is submit to his enemies. Hey, I'm Minister Adam, and Sunday School is now in session. Welcome to JCC Sunday School lesson for May 16th, 2021. The title of this International Sunday School lesson in Boyd's Commentary, as well as Towson's Press and the National Sunday School Commentary is Jeremiah, the Suffering Preacher of Doom. Hey, if you enjoy our lessons, please let us know by liking, commenting, subscribing, and hitting the little bell to be notified when we post each week. To find out more about Jordan Christian Center, a virtual ministry aiming to transform lives by equipping, educating, empowering, as well as encouraging the world, please visit us at jordanchristiancenter.com. Before we get into the word, let's start with a little prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with us as we study your word so we may learn to have the courage to speak your word regardless of the situation. God, we love you, honor you, and you, we praise you. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, the unifying topic of our lesson today is the consequences of giving challenging advice. Our scripture is coming from Jeremiah chapter 38, verses 14 through 23. Our main topic is coming from Jeremiah chapter 38, verse 15, which reads, Jeremiah said, if I tell you the truth, you will kill me. If I give you advice, you won't listen to me anyway. Now, the aim of our lesson is by the end of this lesson, we will agree with Jeremiah's hesitation to give controversial advice to Zedekiah, since Jeremiah's apprehension when talking to Zedekiah and commit to giving challenging godly advice. Now, as we do each week, we'll start with a little bit of background. We're continuing in the unit theme, Courageous Prophets of Change. Now, last week we discussed the prophet Isaiah, who warned Judah of both the coming disaster and rescue of Judah, the Israelites, and all of the world by the coming Messiah. This week, we'll move on to the book of Jeremiah and discuss the courage of the prophet who also authored the book, Jeremiah. Now, God chose this man of undeniable courage to speak to the people of Judah on behalf of the Lord, even though they would not listen to him. Jeremiah was only 20 years old when he began his prophecy, and he continued in that office for the rest of his adult life, some 40 or so years. Jeremiah's in, uh, ministry began in 627 BC and ended sometime around 582 BC with the prophecy to the Jews who had flew, fl uh, fled to Egypt to escape the Babylonian exile. Now, during Jeremiah's time, the Israelites may have feared uh, their future as the outsiders draw near to them. However, rather than re responding with humility and repentance to God, the people of Jerusalem primarily lived as islands among themselves. They disregarded the Lord's commandments and the increasing danger that resulted from their disobedience. The prophets of Jeremiah, I'm sorry, the prophecies of Jeremiah offer us a unique insight to the mind and heart of one of God's faithful servants. The book includes numerous of personal um, statements of emotional engagements, painting Jeremiah not merely as a prophet brought on the scene to deliver God's message, but also as a red-blooded human being who felt compassion for his people. He desired judgment for wrongdoers, and he was concerned with his own safety as well, as this will be uncovered in our lesson today the pain and grief, it taught the prophet Jeremiah as he watched the, his beloved people worship other gods, refuse to turn back to the one and true God of their ancestors. The sorrowful prophet had been uh, met with rejection and imprisonment, banishment, false accusation, and physical brutality because of the message that God sent him to deliver. Now, as we get to Jeremiah 38, 
which is in our lesson today, today, it began with Jeremiah warning the people of Judah of the intimate threat of Babylonian um, that it should be met with submission. That's what's interesting. He, Jeremiah is telling them, hey, don't go out and fight the Babylonians. You need to submit to them and surrender to them. Otherwise, Jerusalem will be crushed for it as the Lord was fighting against them and their ways. Now, if they did not surrender, only famine and death awaited them. So when King um, Zedekiah's sons, the prince and the advisor, when they heard about what Jeremiah had to say, they falsely accused Jeremiah and brought the, him to King Zedekiah, who in turn allowed them to do whatever they want to, uh, to him. He didn't oppose it at all. So they decided to throw Jeremiah into the cistern or like a sewer or a big a hole with mud at the bottom of it. They threw him down there and basically left him to starve. Jeremiah was down, but he wasn't out because God used an African name, man named Ebit Melik who worked in the king's um, palace and he decided to plead Jeremiah's case. Guess what? The king actually changed his mind and allowed Ebit to actually retrieve Jeremiah from the sewer along with 30 other men. God actually rewarded Ebit for his, um, his works in helping Jeremiah and his reward was his life will be spared when his city is besieged by the Babylonians. Now, Jeremiah was still in prison after this, but King Zedekiah sent for Jeremiah one more time. This time, the king wanted secret counsel with the prophet. And this is where our lesson picks up today in Jeremiah chapter 38, verse 14, which reads, One day, King Zedekiah sent for Jeremiah and had him brought to the third entrance of the Lord's temple. I want to ask you something, the king said, and, I, and don't try to hide the truth. So here we go. After all the king had allowed to happen to Jeremiah, now he wants his counsel. Now it's clear here that the king definitely uh, respected Jeremiah as a prophet of the Lord, but he hated what Jeremiah had to say. The king knew the Babylonians were coming and he was scared. So this why, I basically as a last ditch, ditch effort, he wanted to go and, and get some advice from uh, Jeremiah hoping that it would be different advice from the past. So this time, because he was in trouble, he wanted to hear from God. This is why he wanted to go get Jeremiah. Now, the king, like many of the hypocrites who have a seed of God, and they, they, they kind of fear God, but they're, they, it's fluctu it fluctuates and it, it continuously changes. They call on God only when in distress, but as soon as the threat moves, their thought process change. They change churches because they don't like the pastor who rightly um, speak the word of God according to the Bible. They change friends who confront them and trying to better them. They change their mind at the first sight of obstacles. This is an example of the king. He, he can't make up his mind and he, he, he know of God, but he don't know God. And that's the problem. So he summoned Jeremiah secretly so that the prince and nobody else would know about it. So to see what Jeremiah have to say, hopefully in his mind, it will be something different. But at the end of the day, King Zedekiah knew Jeremiah, knew exactly what Jeremiah was going to say because Jeremiah was saying the same thing he had said before, which caused the prince to get him thrown into the cistern but he was looking for a new word from the Lord. See, the king's advisors and the, the, the king, the prince, um, the, the, you know, the sons of the, uh, of the king, they openly despise God and God's the servant. They are uh, servants. They had no problem trying to kill the prophets of God. But Zedekiah, he must have had some type of reservation by uh, as far as totally uh, abandoning God. So he chose to talk to Jeremiah again in private to hear a word from God. Well, if you want to call that hearing. But here's the thing. Meeting with Jeremiah in private, it shows that the king was more fearful of the princes uh, and, and his advisor than the judgment of God. And that, that's very strange that he would fear the rejection of others over the judgment of God. And many of us suffer from that today that we fear that people are going to laugh at us or put us down or not promote us or not allow us to move ahead of life. We um, fear that so much that we'd rather do what the world tells us to do rather than doing what God tells us to do 
um, in order not to have to face that type of judgment. Now, as we move down to verses 15 and 16, it says, Jeremiah said, if I tell you the truth, you will kill me. If I give you advice, you won't listen to me. So King Jedekiah secretly promised him, as sure as the Lord our creator lives, I, I will not kill you or hand you over to the men who want you dead. See, Jeremiah has a sense, has sense that he would be wasting his breath by telling the king the information God um, had, had, had told him. He figured he'd be wasting his breath. He believed that um, basically it was a double negative outcome. Either he would be killed or the king would listen anyway. So therefore, this prophecy is frivolous as far as moving the king to do something. Now, understandably so, Jeremiah was a little uh, afraid to tell the king because he knew the results of it. And the king had already proven that, hey, he would allow his prince and advisor to do whatever they want with uh, Jeremiah. They had already tried to kill them. But Jeremiah has always shown courage and this time was no different. He is clearly going to tell the king what thus says the Lord and he know is something that the king is not going to like nor will he obey it. Therefore he knew his actions may be detrimental to his welfare. However, desperate to hear a word from the God from God the king agreed that he would not allow anything to happen to Jeremiah if he tell them what thus says the Lord. Now, as we move down to verses 18 and 19, it says, Then Jeremiah said to Jedekiah, This is what the Lord of heaven's army, the God of Israel said, If you surrender to the Babylonian officer, you and your family will live and the city would not burn down. But if you refuse to surrender, you will not escape and the city will be handed over to the Babylonians and they will burn it to the ground. See, we commonly say uh, bad words have four letters, but the truth is this bad word that Jeremiah is telling the uh, King Jedekiah has six words and it's become synonymous with the bad word. And that word is submit. No one likes to submit according to the Bible. Children doesn't like, don't like submitting to parents. Wives don't like submitting to husbands. Husbands don't like submitting to God. To submit means to surrender our will over to someone else. But this is what Jeremiah is telling the king to do, to surrender to the Babylonians. To, to, uh, however, to surrender is actually doing the will of God. See, the Babylonians are mere tools that God used to chastise the Israelites because of their years upon years of disobedience. If the, uh, if the king submitted to God's will, he and his family would live and Jerusalem would not be burnt to the ground. On the other hand, if he chose not to submit, God's will will still be done, but the consequences of disobedience will be more severe. If the king choose not to submit, he would um, not be the only one suffering the consequences in this matter. His family would reap the consequences. Jerusalem as a whole would reap the consequences of the decision of this particular leader. The king's de uh, decision here was going to affect the livelihoods of people other than himself as well, based on his decision on whether or not he would submit to the will of God at that time. See, too often we look at the decision, uh, our decisions in a vacuum. But truth be told, some of us are living off the prayers and blessings as well as the curses or suffering of generations before us. Your decision to serve God or yourself right now may very well affect generations to come after you. All of us are reaping the consequences, when you think about it, of the original sin from Adam and Eve causing the fall of us all. So here the, the king is faced with to surrender or to suffer the consequences. Now, as we move on down to verses 19 and 20, it says, but I'm afraid, said the king, the Babylonians may turn me over to the Judeans who have defected to them. And who knows what they'll do to me? Jeremiah replied, you won't be handed over to them if you choose to obey the Lord for your life will be spared and all will go well with you. See, this is 
the king's response to Jeremiah, giving him this option. You can obey and submit yourself by surrendering to the Babylonians, or you can disobey and there will be consequences for that as well. So we find that King um, Jedekiah here, uh, he faced a fork in the road that we all will face. We, uh, do we trust God with our lives or do we lean on our own understanding and try to save ourselves? See, Jesus said in Luke 17, 33, if you cling to your life, you will lose it. And if you let your life go, you will save it. See, to cling to your life means that you basically worshiping your, and serving yourself. Your desires at that time by clinging on to your life will lead into eternal death or hell. But if you let go of your life, in other words, put your life in God's hand, um, leaning not on your own understanding and allow God to use you, then you have eternal life with God. So King Jeremiah, sorry, King Jedekiah feared the Babylonians would turn him over to the Jews who had fled Jerusalem. Um, and he, he, he treated them very harshly and, 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 and criticized them and threatened them. So he was scared that he was going to get turned over to the people that he had dogged out for so long. And it's interesting here because it sounded like the king was more afraid of being marked, mocked and laughed at which is clinging on to his own life, then the consequences of trusting God and, and truly being saved. I find it interesting here that Zedekiah, he, he didn't want to surrender to the Jude Judeans. That, that's interesting. So it wasn't like he was afraid of the Babylonians. He was afraid of the other Jews that, that he had persecuted and, and they defected and go over. He was afraid that they were going to laugh at him and dog him out and possibly kill them. And more than likely is because he treated them unfairly. So he feared retaliation. In the end, the consequences of not obeying God's word are always worse than whatever keeps us from doing the Lord's command. Now, Jeremiah tried to assure, assure the king that, hey, his fear is not a reality. He tried to remove the objection and assure the king that the Babylonians would never deliver him to the hands of other Jews. He can depend on it. So he's trying to reassure him that, no, if you do the will of God, you will be okay. They're not going to turn you over to anyone. Now, as we move to um, verses 21 to 23, um, th this, this message continue. In 21, it says, but if you refuse to surrender, this is what the Lord has revered to me. All the women left in your palace will be bought out and given to the officers of the Babylonian army. Then the women would taunt you saying, what friends you have. They have betrayed you and misled you. When your feet sank in the mud, they left you to your fate. All of the women and children will be led out, of Bab led out to the Babylonians and you will not escape. You will be seized by the king of Babylon and this city will burn down. Jeremiah was given an, uh, uh, the affirmative on uh, consequences, now he's given the negative consequences. So here, if he does not listen and surrender, the women will be taken and given to the Babylonian army. And they're going to turn around and mock him. They, they're going to mock the king and his decision. And keep in mind, one of the reasons why the king did not want to surrender is he was afraid of being mocked by his the, the, the prince and afraid of being mocked by the, the, um, the Israelites that had uh, defected. But here we find if he don't do what God tells him to do, the very thing that he don't want to happen will happen. Uh, it will be the women taunting him. And they are taught that his decision to listen to the prince and the advisors who urge him in a hopeless struggle against the Babylonians. And, and, and he's saying when, when he <laughs> this is interesting here because they, they were saying that he listened to them. So when he get thrown into the cistern, into the mud, they're going to leave him there. Nobody's going to come to get him. Now, unlike Jeremiah, when he was thrown into the cistern, he had friends. He had Ebed to come and rescue him when he got thrown in there. They're saying, no, that won't be the case for you, king. But wait, there's more. Zedekiah's wife and children will also be harmed and eventually Zedekiah will also die a gruesome death. Lastly, 
The whole city, including the palace and the tem uh, temple, will be destroyed and set ablaze. And the cause of this fire will be because of Zedekiah's stubbornness. And his, he, he wasn't willing to surrender and submit to the will of God. I know it looked like the Babylonians are doing all this thing, but it was the will of God that, that um, Jerusalem is become besieged by the Babylonians. And God gave him one more opportunity to not be destroyed and, and to make sure the temple don't get destroyed. They were still going to be captured, but the city wouldn't be destroyed. People's lives would not be um, so messed up. They wouldn't be taken to exile. And given this last chance, the king stubbornness still led him to fight instead of surrender. Jeremiah makes it clear that this is the doing of the Lord. Now the king was left to obey or disobey, live or die. This is the choice that the king had back then and the choice that we have right now. Anyone that chooses self over God will suffer the same consequences of the fire of eternal damnation. Now, how can we apply this lesson of what we learned today? Um, and, and that is, we have to do the will of God even when it seems unpopular, unattractive, uncertain, and even unattainable sometimes. The enemy will always present us with seemingly easier option where we can rest on our own understanding. But you don't need faith if you, go, if you know exactly how things are going to turn out. You, you don't need faith for that. You need faith to be able to lean on God to know God knows what's best for you. Jeremiah encourages each of us to have the courage to do the will of God in a selfless manner, knowing that God will protect us as well as guide us. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that concludes our lessons for this week. May God bless you and keep you. May um, his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God turn his face towards you and give you peace. Don't forget to leave us a, a comment and a like and subscribe to our channel. So until next week, God willing, goodbye.